No, no, no. You've chosen, and you've chosen poorly. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to A More Philly Union, the podcast where we swear to talk about the Philly Union, the whole Philly Union, and nothing but the Philly Union, with as few digressions as possible. We are we are your hosts. I'm Paul. I'm C. And I'm E. So this week in our housekeeping uh, section uh, it was very nice. We got a, a personal thank you letter from the Philadelphia Union Foundation for our thank donation. You. Thank you. Yeah, our help us help the you uh, challenge. They, uh, they they sent us a nice little email and a letter, you know, thanking us for our contribution. So. Thank you to yeah. all of our listeners for supporting us and, and downloading and, uh, you know, giving us the encouragement to keep doing this podcast. And, uh, you know, we, we made that contribution and kind yeah. of in the podcast name, sort of in your name. Yeah. So a little bit of a thank you letter. It was a nice surprise to get. It was. Yeah. And I think it was uh, 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 Leah, I think, or Leah was the, the woman who reached out to us. So I wrote back and just kind of repeating here on the podcast just in case someone there actually listens but uh um yeah we we, we are interested in maybe trying to work with them next seat uh, next season um maybe we could do something a little extra special but i don't know we'll see where it goes but uh yeah it was great hearing from them so thank you yeah and then as far as downloads we got another new international uh pin in our map where was it from this time e uh yeah uh belgium we got our first download from belgium very cool another another you know part of the world where the soccer center gravity tends to you know move through so that was a nice uh surprise um so thanks for downloading i don't know if it's uh you know a, a, a a person that lives in that area or just one of our other european listeners who happen to be traveling through and downloading but either way thanks yeah so for those who celebrate it today, it's happy is Saint Nicholas Day, so happy Happy Saint Nicholas Day for any Nicholas. of you. And um, yeah, may the Krampus be uh, merciful and uh, Nicholas generous. But um, yeah, we got the the Philly uh, the Philly special Christmas Christmas special, special uh, album, album double um, set, which is super awesome i mean it's such a wait wait, wait. A- the philly special christmas, christmas special, special album <laughs> yeah it's it's fantastic yep. it's, it's their second year uh fundraiser um and it's just it's just such a great story i, I know most people have heard it i mean christy if you want to give the quick rundown feel free um not i mean I, I think if you're a philly sports fan you probably already know that they did this last year uh at jason kelsey's uh, instigation because apparently he's a huge Christmas fan and uh, he recruited Jordan Mylotta and Lane Johnson. I think so. Um, to be his his uh, cohorts on that, and um, his joke is that Jordan Mylotta uh, became a football player so that to start his singing career. Because yeah, if right. you've heard him sing, <laughs> holy cow, it is insane. Yeah. Um, well, so... he was on the mask. Oh, was oh, he? Was he, was he yeah, really the, the, masked the masked singer? The masked singer. The masked singer. Was he really? Okay, that's pretty cool. That. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, Lane Johnson has more of kind of a country thing country, going yeah. on. And then I mean, pick your favorite uh, gruff kind of Springsteenian uh, singer, yeah. and of course that's just. I think he's, Kelsey. I think Kelsey is more as the more of the drunk guy in the bar singing along with the cover band kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he does he does plenty of volume, yeah. good heart. Yeah, yeah. not necessarily carrying a tune in a bucket, <laughs> but that's okay. You're just having fun singing. Yeah, with he, him. he does all I right. He, he does, does better than you'd think. I mean, their but, cover yeah. right of uh, well, their their reinvention of fairy tale of. Of New uh, York, New York as for a tale of Philadelphia, which I mean, of course he did with his brother. And so then the Swifties took it to number one, actually. I don't know mm. if you guys knew that. Oh, nice. Um, nice. But is, yeah. is that the one where um, where Travis ends it with, uh, you know, F Dallas or something like that? No, that was from the first album. That was okay. Jason um, who did that. But this, so this was new this year. They decided to turn Fairy Tale of New York, which yep. is a song sung by a couple. Um, into a song sung by brothers who fight but still love each other and so and they substitute a bunch of uh philly references for uh you know um new york references and and all that kind of stuff and and clean it up a little because you heard the original one it's 
definitely very much not uh some of the words they use very much not socially acceptable yeah. um but um and r.i.p to uh shane mcgowan uh, shane mcgowan who uh wrote that song and just passed away but um anyway yeah it's it's really it's quite sweet so yeah the swifty took it to number one but anyway so uh jordan uh, excuse me um uh jason kelsey of course thought this, he'd give it a shot and maybe it would just be something that he showed folks when they came over to visit at Christmas time in years to come. And last year, I think it ended up selling out. The first printing sold out in a few minutes. Yeah. The next one sold out in seconds. I think they ended up doing at least three. There is a ton of money for children's charities. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and so uh, they just did it again this year. Yeah. And um, so they brought in Travis, and I, I believe they brought in a few more Eagles players as well in this one, didn't they? Yeah, um, I think they did last year, and then again this year um, to fill in on, you know, do some like kind of talking breaks, you mm-hmm. know, in some of the songs mm-hmm. over the instrumental parts. Parts, and then um, they also they got Patty Labelle this year. Yeah, wow. Uh huh. And oh, gosh, there's another someone else here, and I'm so sorry that this is escaping me. Who who the other person is? But um, Paul, did, yeah, did you so. did you hear their cover of Fairy Tale of Well, the Fairy No, Tale I haven't yet. Oh, I, I, I got to do that. So I just went, but Christy, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that was the. Oh. I mean, that was really it. So we, um, I got it from Saint Nicholas today <laughs> uh, for my Saint Nicholas present. So, um, um, which was well, not some the original. Dallas fans might think that Krampus came to visit you. But... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, f Dallas. <laughs> Well, well, uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about real quick though is on the uh, the arcs. They it comes with a puzzle too, or the the it's also on the the record you know, the when it folds open, and uh, so it has like you know the theater, everyone's in it, and you, it's kind of like a Where's Waldo as you look around to see who's all on the stage and in the balconies and all that. You know, you could see. Uh, I first noticed in the bottom right corners there's a reclining gritty. On the nice. bottom left corner, there's the Philadelphia Fanatic hanging up, and one of the balconies is Swoop, and uh, and then there was also the the, the mascot for the Sixers, um, but there was no Fang. I was a little little disappointed that, Aww. you know, especially with the 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 love, uh, you know, the the love that the Sons of Bands gave, you know, we all give Jason Kelsey, but uh, I mean, maybe he's in there somewhere. There is a on the um kind of the architectural features going around the uh the outside of the stage you know like the gilded gold mm-hmm. stuff there's like there's these little like uh easter eggs you know all around of like oh there's william penn in there and then you know stuff like that there is a snake on one of them so you know i mean i know it's also a symbol for you know the don't well. tread on me stuff yeah yeah but still well you know we're st- i i would I guess I'm not totally surprised if they didn't put it put the union in there, but it would be cool if yeah. they, if they had thought to do it, yeah. especially That's since okay. they did have we'll, Kelsey out to bang the drum and all. Maybe we'll be on on the the cover of, of next year's album. There you go, Volume Three. Yeah, Volume Three. It, it'll be Jason Kelsey and in, in a in a uh, you know with all the ma- the team mascots or something like that. Uh, one little side note: apparently Shane McGowan did hear their cover of Fairy Tale of. Philadelphia. Did really he really funny. hear it? He did hear it, and he did say Uh-oh. something to the extent of like it was a, uh, it was, it was a really nice uh, like. Oh, he was he basically he he thought they did they did a good job on it. Basically, oh, um, that's awesome. Uh, I'm actually Google it really quick. Fairy tale of Philadelphia. That's very sweet because, uh, you know, Shane McGowan was, of course, the lead singer of the Pogues. If anybody knows Pogues, Irish punk band from the, you know, 80s. Um, but uh, he he lived a life um, and um, he was not really, really unwell by the end. I mean, just probably not saying because he lived a life, but I don't think it helped How about that. Um, so um, yeah. it's nice to hear that he knew about it and. And approved. I, I remember reading it that he did, he did hear their, uh, um, their rendition. Because I know when when he died, when he passed away, uh, apparently Jason Kelsey posted something on social, uh, basically okay. you know, kind of, you know, 
honoring uh, Shane McGowan and also saying how he was just so honored that uh, he got to hear their version of the, of his song oh, before he died so cool. and that he, he uh, appreciated it. Um, According to irishcentral.com, Shane McGowan's quote says, tell them I am knocked out, Shane McGowan said on X, formerly Twitter. Uh-huh. Sharing a video of the Kelsey Brothers' fairy tale of Philadelphia. That's, I mean, that's high praise right there. I mean, it's yeah, just really. to be to that. That's such a, it's such an awesome song. And the other thing too that I just, it, it I've always just loved that song. And yeah, the fact that like leave it to Jason Kelsey and then everybody else because it was a whole team effort, but uh, to give Philadelphia that song because it's just it is so. It's, I'm just so glad we have that song now. That's mm-hmm. that's ours, you know. And so, yeah. Um, yeah so thank yeah. you. Uh, well, I'm definitely going to have to go get on YouTube and, and and give the songs a listen. Maybe get a copy of the yeah. uh, the, the CD. It's awesome yeah. that they they uh, use it as a chance to p- support local charities. Um, and it's it's really cool to see this r- latest crop of Philadelphia athletes, you know, from all of the sports, you know, giving back to the city. I mean, I never doubted that. They, I don't really doubt that they used to do it, but it seems like, the, you know, whether it's the Kelsey in the group from the Eagles or Harper in the group from the Phillies or, you know, Bedoya and, 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 and the union players. Yeah. Um, you know, just it just seems like the players and the teams these years, the last few years are really trying to connect with the city yeah. on a on a on a genuine level and uh yeah. it's awesome to see that yeah yeah it does feel like a lot more than the usual you know lip service of oh our fans are you know mm-hmm. what we need to keep going turn the page you know they definitely seem to genuinely appreciate the fandom in, in philly yeah so um which you know uh um that's why other teams don't appreciate the fandom in Philly. <laughs> Probably all, right, I think all for the same reasons. Yeah. yeah. I Go think ahead. we've digressed on that long enough. Let's mm-hmm. let's do let's do circle back to the point of the podcast here is to talk uh Philly Union or at yeah. least some 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 MLS soccer. Sure. Um so to that end, there were two games this past weekend, neither of which included the, the union. So, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, first up was the Eastern Conference final between Cincinnati and Columbus. Uh, Cincinnati took a two nothing lead in the first half, was first it? First half, yeah. And and Columbus once again proved that a two nothing lead is the most dangerous lead in soccer by coming yep. back and winning it three to two in overtime. Yeah, yeah. For me, of the two games, this is the one I was more interested in watching. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I like both these teams. You know, we've we discuss the the complicated relationship that is uh, Cincinnati uh, from as Union fans. Um, you know, and when Cincinnati was up two nil and after the first half, I was just like, "Come on, Columbus!" You know, like get in there, let's go. And uh, yeah, I kept saying like, "I want they heard my, you, yeah, I want my candy corn uh, MLS Cup final." <laughs> um and uh yeah apparently they did here so yeah when columbus tied it up and you know you could feel that momentum in the in the uh in the stadium uh you know there's this you know there's this empathy as a union fan with cincinnati i'm like oh guys oh man i know how you feel um yeah and then when columbus got that 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 game winner in the last you know, minutes left in the game. It was just, yeah, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was glad Columbus, you know, did it. Well, the problem uh, was Cincinnati didn't have a Gareth Bale to come in and score it in the 120th minute to why, send the penalty kicks. You, um, but the thing you? is, I am glad to see that 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 Columbus won it in overtime. It didn't go to penalty kicks. Uh, the one kind of cosmic karmic connection here was uh the first columbus goal that got him back into the game was an own goal oh by off alvis powell former union player it's like oh man you know the uh the the, the, the crack in the dam started uh with the yeah. uh, former union player but i i uh, couldn't help but think that they kind of cemented their reputation as the uh union of the west by going this far <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, not only <laughs> scoring that own goal, but then just losing it. 
uh, in the end. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be the Union of the West, you're going to be the Union of the West. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I mean, so. kudos to Pat Noonan. I mean, coach of the year, supporter, uh, shield winners. I mean, they they really checked all so many boxes this year. And, you know, it, you know, on paper, it would have been great to see them go all the way. Oh, you but, think so? <laughs> uh, I mean, I say that now that now that they're not going. Right? I remember last week I was talking about like, nope, you need to win first. You know, so I, I was pretty openly and childishly rooting against them. You were, um, you are consistent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, I mean, no, during the game too. When I mean, when when um, Columbus started coming back, I was yelling at the TV mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but I did start to feel guilty. I'm not gonna lie. You know, as it <laughs> became more apparent that oh, oh, I think they are actually going to lose this. Um, I was both jubilant and penitent at the same time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, 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 you know, they, again, it was, it was kind of similar to, to St. Louis to me because, you know, they had such a good season. Um, you know, maybe not as, as absolutely breakout as St. Louis, but still very good. And um, to, to see them go out like that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. All right. And and then in the other, the Western Conference final, um, you know, it turned out not to be as close or, uh, you know, we yeah. saw Houston's Cinderella run come to an end, unfortunately, as LAFC won that one two to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that... Houston's mistake, wearing flyers orange. Just saying. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, where's the Cincinnati Columbus game? I was interested in watching. The LAFC Houston game, I was more interested in the outcome in the mm-hmm. sense of that one. I definitely wanted Houston to win it, and uh, it just it didn't happen. And um, so we're not getting the candy corn uh, MLS Cup final. Here. We're getting a more of a bumblebee yeah. uh, MLS Cup final once again. And just... I have to say, it must be a very intimidating place to play because it. I mean, they really do. The fan base is yeah. Very vocal, very strong. And then when they're all there in their black jerseys and it's... black flags, I mean, it definitely looks like, you know, evil empire exactly. or pirates or something. I don't know. I mean, it's just... you, you hear the Imperial March exactly. in the background. Pretty when you much. Take a field. I mean, I think they have a... <laughs> the Imperial FC. Yeah. I mean, if it weren't, if it weren't LAFC, <laughs> I'd say they actually have quite lovely yeah. um, uniforms, but uh <laughs> Yeah, pretty intimidating. Yeah. Ooh, this is our <laughs> cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the um, I don't know what you guys think about this one. Um, I think Christy, you and I, we we I think you were there when this happened. I remember watching it, but uh, so at the end of the um Cincinnati Columbus game, you know, they're they're issuing, you know, they're giving out the uh, the trophy for Eastern Conference champion, right? To uh, columbus and they had some guy you know higher up from mls you know oh yes uh, g- oh, giving the award to um mm-hmm. uh was it, it was darlington nagby who took yeah the trophy. it was yeah who also a great player um mm-hmm. but as soon as i saw that i'm like wait a second i bet you a cup of coffee don garber's out west and L- uh, oh heck LA. yeah and sure sure enough he was mm-hmm. and well, I don't know. Does anyone have an opinion on that? Because apparently, obviously, no. I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm not impressed with Don Garber. So I'd, I'd agree with you there, E. I'm not surprised he ended up out west trying to get his face on the game with, with LAFC rather than the one in Ohio. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do think it's kind of a – it kind of sucks that, you know – like the crew didn't get the, get that little bit of love. I mean, they're one of the original teams. Yeah, Even, you know, depending mm-hmm. on whether or not you want to say that the or crew moved to Austin and they created the new team there in, in Columbus or not, Columbus has had a team since MLS has opened yeah. in '96. It's almost 30 years now that the crew has existed in some some form or another, and uh, you know. I like Houston too. I know they actually moved from San Jose. So out of all of, uh, out of the four teams, there was only one MLS original, original. and that was in the crew. That was the crew yeah. and they didn't get the love from, from yeah. Garber. I, I would imagine that if circumstances were just right, they probably would have cut away from the actual game 
to have like Don Garber at like a Dunkin' Donuts handing out a culotta to Messi as he happens to be coming through the drive through You know, it's um, <laughs> but apparently they didn't know where he was on Saturday. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to throw too much shade, but it's kind of like as soon as I saw in the Columbus Cincinnati game, it wasn't Don Garber. It's like okay, I think I know what's happening. And, and from a particularly you know marketing calculus yeah you know i guess probably more eyes are going to be on the lafc game than cincinnati versus columbus but it's just it just keeps contributing to that 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 narrative that if you're not one of the big coastal teams you know la or new york or now miami then it's kind of like well then who cares it's going to really pay attention so all the more reason columbus we're in your corner and then well final. and la has of course as you alluded to the all the celebrities yeah. um yeah. you know uh in their fan base too whether they were yeah. in, t- in attendance or not sure to be frank i fell asleep during that game yeah. but, whether um, whether they yeah. whether any of those celebrities could name more than two players on lafc or Correct. have been to any previous lafc games yeah. doesn't matter yeah I mean, I know Will Ferrell. I think he is actually has a stake of some kind yeah, 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 in yeah. it. Yes. So, um, you know, he's a little more immersed. But I, I, I often, when I see him in his LAFC gear, I often think of uh, when he was on the Daily Show years ago, and oh, yeah. um, John Oliver was still yep. on the Daily Show at the time, yep. and he showed up wearing, I Chelsea. believe, it, yeah, it was a Chelsea jersey, and um, John <laughs> Oliver, I, I don't know, said, "Oh, you're wearing a Chelsea jersey." Uh, John Oliver, famously a, a, a Liverpool fan, and um, he said, oh, well, I, you know, I don't really have a team. I'm still kind of just, uh, you know, getting into it. And he's like, and John Oliver said, no, 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 you've chosen and you've chosen poorly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's... Uh, <laughs> he said, he, I couldn't believe it was coming out of his mouth to Will Ferrell, because at that time, John Oliver was no, a correspondent. Yeah, you know, he no. wasn't uh, John Oliver. So um i feel the same about lafc but that's that's my baggage uh yeah well i do think this means i'm gonna have to go date root around in my closet and so yep. i have to see if i have my old columbus jersey yep uh, yep go try to drag that out for the mls cup final on saturday at yeah three yeah. so I'm definitely i did gonna... turn to e and say well at least paul's original team won yeah <laughs> so yeah i've definitely got to be finding any uh i think if i have a yellow t-shirt <laughs> um, definitely you do yellow ones oh it's right my canada one yeah yep well close enough close enough um yeah definitely uh to support columbus um so we'll have to see if they can win i mean it's gonna be tough uh you know even playing in columbus yeah that's we'll a, be that's columbus. a big boost but lafc you know they have played more games this will be their 53rd game for the season the yeah. only team that is close to them or the union who played 51 yeah and uh lafc you know that's that's a heck of a season and hey credit to them and their coach who i can't remember who is yeah. their coach right now is that vanny no um i forget who lafc's coach is but you know they, they had 53 games this season and they managed to rotate enough to 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 win a couple of things and yeah. and make it to mls cup final so good on them yeah. uh, but i am going to be rooting for columbus Yep. 100%. Let's go crew. All right. So getting back to the to the point of this podcast, let's talk some union <laughs> stuff. There we go. Um, you know, they did release their roster information for 2024. Um, you know, say what you will about Ernst Tanner. The man builds a, builds a, a, a squad and, and he does a good job yep. keeping them together. Yep. Um, so... I think of the players on the team, 24 of them, I think, are currently guaranteed for 2024 yeah, to come right. back. That's right. Yeah. Um, including Jesus Bueno, who just got a new contract. So he's got he's guaranteed through 2026 with a team option for 2027. Um, and the union did exercise options on what do I see here? Julia Carranza. Uh, Chris Donovan, Leon Flock, Damian Lowe, Jeremy Raffanello, Joaquin Torres, and Holden Trent. So you know they they exercised a bunch of bunch of options, and uh, you know so they they got a big portion of their team coming back. So when they 
exercised an option, particularly for Julian Caron Julian Julian Carranza. Does that mean that he he will not get traded or sold during the offseason? Or if they no. do, they get to buy out the um the exercise part of the contract? So the way the way Ernst structures has has been uh, building the contracts for the last few years that he that he's here, um, the players are guaranteed two years of contract time. So that means they they get you know this year and next year or next year and the year after, and then there's a team option for a third year. So if they play well in those first two years, the team says we're going to exercise our option. We're going to pay you according to our negotiated rate for your third year. And then you're going to be a team. You're going to be one of our team members for that third year. Now, the way soccer works with the transfers at any time, a team can transfer their players. So they have them under contract. They can transfer them to another team. If the other team pays a transfer fee that the, that, you know, the union has a player and uh, you know, another team comes in and offers to buy them with it, buy that player with a transfer fee. As long as the team is comfortable with that and the player is willing to go, they can, they can sell them so long as they have the contract. The only time they can't do that is when the player is out of contract, in which case there's a couple of other mechanisms around that. So like, even if they don't end up with, um, you know, with Kai Carranza that's, or Kai Wagner, um, you know, he's, he's currently out of contract, but the way this structure works in MLS, if another team from MLS makes an offer to Kai, the union can make a good faith offer to match that. And, you know, then it, then it turns into an arbitration okay. situation and there's some other things, yeah. but if the, if a team comes in and offers Kai money and the union are not willing to match it, then, you know, he goes off to the other team. Um, gotcha. But yeah, so long as the union have the contract and they've exercised the option so that the, you know, the player is under contract for that following year, they can still make the transfers. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see Carranza, you know, acted on. Now the question will be with exactly. Carranza in particular, is he going to make it through the January transfer window or is yeah. some team from some other league going to say, Hey, Carranza is really hot right now. And Carranza is really hot. So we're going to go ahead and make you an offer that you can't resist. And Carranza is going to want to go somewhere yeah. else. That certainly could be possible, in which case scoops will cry and have to go buy a Jersey for some other team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least you'll know what to get her for mother's day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they did they did announce that they declined the option on Anton Sorensen and um, you know they said farewell to Joe Bendick as well. So yeah. so far those are the only two teams who have left the roster. Um, they have said that they are still in contract negotiations with Kai Wagner. Um, and most importantly to us, they're yeah. still talking to Ali Bedoya. In fact, yeah. that was a major part of of uh, some news articles that came out this week yeah. and as well as Jim, uh, Jim and Ernst's end of season press conference. Yeah. We, that, uh, I think Christy, did you send out that mm -hmm. link on our group yeah. chat, chat? And um, so I guess at some point the Ernst uh, Tanner and, and Curtin, um, you know, basically they said they, they, yeah, they, they said something like they weren't like the communication wasn't correct uh, in the last few yeah. weeks. So, um, but yeah, but now they can talk a bit more and, and I don't remember Curtin's words off the top of my head, but paraphrasing it, it sounds like there's still stuff happening with respect to Bedoya. It, 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 the, the, the way it was worded, I didn't necessarily get the hundred percent impression or confidence that whatever solution they come up with to keep, um, Bedoya with the union, it may not be as a player. I kind of got that vibe. Right. I don't know if there's some sort of technical staff you might become, but I, I don't know. I, just some of the wording that Curtin was using didn't sound exactly like Bedoya would be staying as a player. They want to keep him on the larger team. Yeah. And by team, I mean staff, essentially, yeah. at least. And, um, but they're leaving it very open as to, you know, what, what, role he would play they didn't want to commit to anything i mean ernst did make some comments about you know we're trying to build a sort of a five-year roadmap and then five years he'll mm -hmm. be you know too old to be a player which is yeah. i mean true um it's not a keeper <laughs> the only keepers seem to last that long <laughs> but um you know that doesn't mean that he, you know maybe they 
can squeeze one more season out? Maybe not. I, you know, well, there's it could a lot also of things be that he, his playtime reduces. You know, maybe yes. they bring him in as a second half sub, or Correct. you know, he, he plays more on the secondary um, competitions, the the, mm-hmm. the the league's cup and the open cup, and you know, Joe Bob's cup, uh, whatever yeah. the twelfth and thirteenth competition that the union are playing in next year, you know, maybe that's what he's, he participates in, at least in the earlier stages to give some midfield rotation time because they're going to need it. Mm-hmm. I remember the union brought in, was it Coronel, the goalkeeper uh, when he was with us? I feel like they brought somebody like him in once senior player, definitely at the end of his career. I feel like they brought him in though, to help kind of like both player like player mentor player coach just kind of like bringing in a senior player um well this isn't well, isn't the union but they it didn't isn't that what they did with wayne rooney in dc what didn't wayne yeah, start as a player it? and then yeah. transition i yeah. know he ultimately became manager coach, i don't know if that yeah. was the plan or if that was circumstance yeah. well but, i mean they brought in mondragon um yeah. you know but he had just had that amazing performance at the world cup yeah um and he did well, well with us too he did mm-hmm you did. Um, hmm. So, Christy, your your thing about Rooney playing at DC, becoming a player, coach, kind of, and then going on to uh, uh, England. Yes, Where's he at? Birmingham? Is what's that? Isn't he at Birmingham now or something like that? Yeah, but I always wonder. Like, that's right. Yeah. Is is that what Curtin's doing? He's he's going to start training Allie to replace him one day. <laughs> How? I, what a plot twist! I didn't see that one coming. So it could be Ali. There's a couple of other guys that are in the in the union's uh, assistant training staff right now that that could also be uh, being eyed for eventual replacements, if, yeah. especially as Jim, you know, he's got a contract through 2026. Yeah. Um, you know, after that, he may want to try his luck overseas, or maybe after the World Cup, yeah. the U.S. men's national team op, uh, op, which call it, coaching spot opens up. I don't know. Yeah, you know. that that would be something. I mean, I'm I'm just playing around this idea, like perfect world, that whole thing. But like, you know, we t- we talked about like what would what would what would it be like when Curtin leaves? Because the day is coming. You know, he's he's such a um, you know, a qualified, exceptional coach, and you know, and you know, opportunities are going to come his way that he's not going to be able to say no to, of course. And it's like, all right, well, who would we get? You know, and uh, I was like, I never really thought like bringing Ali Bedoya as a coach. Um, yeah, know, it could be interesting. We'll, we'll get the MLS uh, writers working on that. But I don't think Bedoya is quite ready to hang up his his cleats. I think he still no. wants to play. No. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, you know, he's still, he, I think, you know, there's still plenty for Ali to give both on and off the field. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as, as, as far as his off field contributions, it was cool this year that he actually won the MLS Im- impact player of the year for his yeah. charity work. Yeah. Um, they had a nice little video on the socials uh, for, for when they made that announcement on, as they were flying up to New <laughs> England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he like looked up and he was like all surprised as they, they they announced that he had won and he's like, you know, thanks for the recognition. I appreciate it. Now let's go win this game. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ali could have, you know, flown himself there, you know, just by flapping his arms hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome that they, they recognize yeah. him. Uh, you know, it's, it, he, he's, he's a, he's a family man and, you know, the, he, definitely wants to improve the community and, and that's cool to see him, yeah. you know, being recognized for that. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So uh, while the Eastern or while the, the MLS cup final is on Sunday, looking Saturday. Into the, or Saturday, uh, looking into the future, it is crazy to think that union preseason is like five or six weeks away. Yeah. No rest that's for the just, wicked. That is just, I mean, just again, with this burnout thing, we don't have to go into it, but wow. <laughs> you know when you, wow. when you when you see those pictures of these guys just you know chilling down on some infinity pool overlooking the Caribbean in you know December and January and yeah you know, it's like you know what and somebody's like yeah, man they've earned that this this is it and then they're gonna get right back into the grind yeah and, uh, um, yeah you've ever noticed a lot of uh, MLS players have uh, wedding anniversaries 
late December and early exactly. January because yeah. that's um, that's off when they season. get the time off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, next year is going to be busy because they're going to have Gold Cup, the Olympics, World Cup qualifying. Yeah. They're yeah. going to have a lot of players missing a lot of game time throughout the season. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, one other thing, not necessarily directly union related, but I wanted to bring up. I mean, I don't know how much you two visit Philly soccer page. But, um, you know, that's that's definitely a site that I, I go to for good union conversation and, and mm -hmm. for good union mm -hmm. coverage. Uh, you know, they kind of had a sad notice that they posted the other day that they're, you know, they want to keep it going. You know, they, yeah. they, they appreciate the community, but there's a number of members of that staff that need to step back and they cannot be doing it as, as you know, doing as involved as they have been. So, you know, if any of you are listening or are fans of Philly Soccer Page and you want to get more involved, they're looking for people to step in as editors, as writers, as photographers. Um, you know, they need help. They need yeah. people to step up and, and, and dedicate some time to covering the union. And it's a wonderful page. It's got a great community with it. There's a lot of lot of really good conversation going in the comments and smart conversation that mm. you don't find mm. on a lot of sports blogs and sports websites. Yeah. Well, actually, as a as a late breaking uh, scoops junior update here, oh, okay. um, they actually I I did see a follow up to that, and they had an overwhelming response of people who were interested. Good. Um, and, uh, they said they were going to take some time to sift through what they got. Cause not just cause you're interested doesn't mean that you right, necessarily that you're qualified, qualified, you know, because I mean, I was surprised to find out that that was pretty much an all volunteer organization. That's a lot yeah, of work. Um, so, uh, hopefully, um, you know, they, they got serious offers and people who can can carry the torch that would be that'd be really nice but i mean definitely just seconding what paul said um i i hardly think it's too late to to chip in if you're interested um and and i'm sure they can still use the help yep they never turn help away many hands no. make like make mm -hmm. light work and all that and mm -hmm. the philly soccer page reputation that opens a lot of doors they're involved in a lot of you know, they get access to the field, they get access to the press box, they get access to Jim Curtin and the players, they get into the press really press conferences, they get into the locker rooms. Um, you know, so if, if you have an interest in sports uh, media of any sort, and you want to want to take, you know, get involved, um, you know, it's a real opportunity for anybody in college that's looking to do this, or anybody who has a love of the union and wants to get in, you know, get their name out there and start helping share that love. Uh, you know, it definitely looks like something that might be, might be doable. I'm glad to hear that though, that they're, that they got a good response. Yep. But there, there was a writer at the Philly soccer page for years by the name of Adam Kahn. And as far as, you know, X's and O's and coverage of the game and understanding the flow of the game, his, and, and his ability to, he was really, really good at that. And he was really good at communicating that to people in, in the print world. So much so that he left Philly soccer page and took a full-time job with the union and was oh, wow. on the union for a couple of years. I don't know where he's at now, but yeah, he actually changed that, took that Philly soccer page volunteer job, turned it into a, into an actual job okay. um, and then was working for the union, the team that he loved for wow. a, a, quite a while. I mean, it's um, a wonderful opportunity if you have the, yeah. you know, he, he, the, he, the used to run, interest. he used to run the union podcast for a while and he did a bunch of un YouTube videos huh. for them. So it's definitely a possibility. You know, the union do rec recognize and, and aren't afraid to pull quality, you know, talent from, from wherever they can find it. And like I said, so the Philly soccer page is a great page. We're really, really spoiled as union fans to have a, a, mm -hmm. a, a volunteer page as good as Philly soccer page. Mm -hmm. All right. So question of the week, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to out. It's been fun the last few weeks. You know, we did our Thanksgiving 
uh, meal uh, band, and then we did our union player band. So keeping with that theme, and since it's St. Nicholas Day, of the current union players, current. let's go current, right. who would you pick to be St. Nicholas, and who would you pick to be Krampus? Uh, Krampus in the, let's see, you guys actually know the story behind Krampus a little bit better than me. It's kind of a like a a, pun, a, a vengeful or punishing kind of a. a it's spirit. like the the into to uh, Saint Nicholas's yang. So like if he's like if Saint Nicholas is the good uh, who rewards the children, then Krampus is the uh, is his friend counterpart who uh, comes along and punishes the bad. So, so it's which one of the, the union children. players would we see, you know, giving giving something nice to the to the good, you know, those who are good, and then who would we see punishing the some those who are bad? Okay, um, I mean, I hate to say it, but I think I got my Krampus pick pretty quick. <laughs> that understanding, <laughs> you know, as far as a union player who I could see going in and wanting to punish people who are 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 challenging and, and of the of the current players well, in particular. Yeah, way to phrase it. Yeah. I mean, I've got to go Martinez as Krampus. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly what i was gonna pick that's too. who i was gonna pick too <laughs> not because he's mean i mean he no. seems like super fun and super awesome and, and really cool but yeah i mean as far as you know the guy who you're gonna expect to see just go up and say no buddy that's not it and you know punish them for it yeah. uh yeah i could see him but if all right so if you two were going to pick him who would i pick as the as as one of his helpers let's say um, Krampus's helpers, or, or yeah, like Krampus's helpers. I know it's normally Sinter, Sinterklaas who has the uh, the helpers, but right. um, and I I think it's it's worth noting too the Krampus too is this it's this demonic, but it's also like a, it's a trickster. It's it it's uh, it depends. You know, yeah, there's different interpretations where some of them are more impish than others. Impish right. is a good word. Yeah, yeah it's it, it, you know he punishes, but it's it's this whole he's there's a certain uh, flamboyance there's a certain you know definitely comes in larger the life uh so that's that's one of those i thought of martinez too but anyway good paul yeah well with that impishness and and you know punishing the other team i could see carranza also being an option mm. being that you know he's been one of our more consistent scorers but he also does it with a bit of flair yeah there you go yeah all right. So and then, and so we all kind of agree that Martinez <laughs> was, a, was a clear Krampus pick. How about your uh, your your Saint Thank Nicholas, you. your your giver? Well, you know, Christy, you want to? I'm still working on it. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out what angle I'm taking on this. Um, I, I, do you have one? A eh? well, you know, it's kind of like. I, so St. Nicholas, very giving, kind of this peaceful presence, you know, um, you know. Uh, oh, we're going to pick the same one, aren't yeah, we? We're, gonna, oh, we're all going to pick Lesnes, right? Right. <laughs> I was going to go Blake. Okay. Blake, oh, Blake oh would be that's one. actually a really good point. No, no, the, wait. Yeah. The other one I was thinking was maybe Curtin. Or Bedoya. Or Bedoya. Yeah. Yeah, I had Bedoya in there, too. Yeah, but would be a good one. I was actually thinking more Elliot than Glasness, but you know, I can oh, see sure. that. But I, yeah. I, I, my first thought was Blake. My, my top pick was Blake. Yeah, I actually yeah. think Blake fits the bill the best. Yeah, Blake would be a good one. Um, uh, now that you, because I was trying to think, like giving though, you know, just yeah. Glasness just seems like you know, yeah, I think of him as a peacemaker, and I think that's where I was coming yeah. from on that. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like I like the Blake pick. I'm stealing it. How many scr- how many uh scrums or whatever on the field do we see where, where Glesnes just charges in and just pulls back? You know, four guys. You know, yep. away from the brawl. Yep. Um, I found like we all went with Martinez for Krampus. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so that that's not I, that was a fun one, that Krampus and Saint Nicholas. <laughs> Yeah. But I could also have seen Bedoya been, you know, picked for for yeah. uh, St. Nicholas as, you know, the man just won the Impact Player yeah. of the Year award. Yeah. So, yeah. pretty clear. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of interpretations on this one for sure. Okay. Well, that's fun. Glad we're keeping that, that alive. Uh, anything else from either of you? That's all I got. No, all right. I think that's it. 
Well, we'll end our episode here as we usually do. Come visit us at our website, amorephillyunion.com. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can email us at pod at amorephillyunion.com. You can reach us at X at our Twitter at amorephillyu. Our user names at Instagram, YouTube, and threads is Amore Philly Union. As a reminder, we have our Spotify playlist under Amore Philly Union. So please tune in and, and see what odd songs we've added to the list since last time you checked it out. I feel like we need to start adding some like holiday uh, gems in there. Uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Well, if they have any of the Philly special Christmas special Ooh. album, they maybe do. we should look to do, uh, you know, fairy tale in Philadelphia or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. As All always, right. get our, as always, get our podcast wherever you get yours at, you know, Google, uh, well, is Google still around, but definitely at Apple or Spotify or Amazon or iHeartRadio, whatever you use. I, I did read that uh, when Google, it's it's going away in early 2024, but it's it's migrating over to uh, YouTube Music. It is, yeah. So I don't know. Who don't, knows? Who knows? So but anyway, <laughs> just FYI. Well, feel free to find us wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe, like, comment, help us spread the word. And uh, so, thanks everyone for tuning in for another episode of the More Philly Union. We're your host. I'm Paul. I'm C. I'm E. Go Everybody's leaving. Corey, you and I are doing the podcast. Or has opinions. <laughs>